fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he can't win the outside of both of them. Maloney! Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the oh horn. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Half the field's going to get involved. Six very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my god! God, what?! This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. It's a race, a race course, sorry, that you can call an institution. You know it's an institution because it's one of the first names that gets brought up when you talk about truly iconic racing circuits. Yes, it doesn't have the elevation changes like, say, what an Eurusion Radion has. It certainly doesn't have as much in terms of top speed, say, like a Monza has. But what it has is something special as one of the first tracks to ever get created and one of those very few tracks which you can say is a racing institution. It's the home of British motorsport and British sim racing to go alongside that as well. Silverstone and the penultimate round of this Porsche iRacing Cup, these Porsche Esports Super Cup qualifiers here on the iRacing Esports Network presented to you by SimSpeed TV. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's very clear that I woke up about 15 minutes ago. It's Shakespeare here in the commentary box, joined as ever by Jay Kennedy on cameras and on colour for this one. Qualifying currently underway with three minutes to go and a little bit more than that as we look at the Kawanda number one car, Mac Backham, making his way through the old turn one of Cops Corner and through the very famous Maggots and Beckett chicanes here, trying to take as much curb as possible. New layout, which is effectively about almost 10 years old now at this point, how old it is at the moment, but every single time becomes so, so vital, Jay, around this place, especially with the stop-start nature of the final sector. Yeah, it's a, a really interesting layout now. Hello, everybody. Um, every single time we broadcast a race here using this version of the circuit with the, the, the newer, more modern version of the circuit, we have had some of the most fantastic racing we have ever seen. It doesn't matter whether it's in an MX-5, a V8, a Porsche, anything, a, a HPD, an LMP1, doesn't matter. This track just somehow provides extremely exciting racing to watch. So uh, looking forward to seeing how these cars go as Mac back crosses the line and only goes to P11. Dane Warren is the pace setter at the moment. We saw last week how good he was. So it's going to be interesting to see how he goes from potentially the lead of the race at this circuit. 2.025, his best. Kalzabon in second. Cholak third. The man who cannot qualify in the Porsche Esports Super Cup, Peter Berryman, is fourth. Jassy Championship leader in seventh position only. Four drop rounds are available in this series. We've got championship standings, which only have two of them available for you at the moment. And it is Jassy on top. 2837, 20-point lead over Peter Berryman, but I think his drops are a little bit better. Alexander Thieb currently third, Sindre set source in fourth, Kaida Sawyer rounding out the top five. But of course, got the likes of Dane Warren there, tenth. He's been running around second split, third split, only just getting his real opportunities going forward. And it really does show you that sometimes the I rating system is a hindrance sometimes more rather than a benefit to some drivers. Dane Warren came into this with almost a 2,000 I rating deficit, and that put him in the spurt, third split to start as I try and put my teeth in. Yeah, and he's uh, just absolutely dominated since he's come into the top split. He's had some great results. So last week at VIR, he just absolutely dominated the racing, and no one was even close to coming near him. So uh, looking forward to seeing how he goes tonight. But yeah, that championship 
actually is very, very tight at the top there between Giassi and Berryman for the Porsche iRacing Cup. But when we convert that across to the Porsche, e Porsche eSports Super Cup qualifying, that's even tighter. And uh, some of the big names that we would expect based on their performances throughout this season that we would expect to be in those top 20 are not there at the moment. So this race is very, very crucial. It is very crucial. Zoriel Bow does not go quicker on his lap. 208, he had struggles. Goes through 20 seconds left. You want to talk about drivers who are on the outside looking in. Keep an eye out on Kim Erickson, Gianni Vecchio, Yao Vaz, Alexander Larritsen, Oriol Bow out there looking in as well. So they are going to be drivers who are going to try desperately to get themselves in. Drivers who are in, though, Max Verstappen, P16 in the championship. He finds himself in 18th place at the moment. Qualifying comes to an end, and this is how things will stack up. Dane Warren, back-to-back -back pole positions with Thibaut Kauzabon there alongside for AAA Esports in second. Cholak goes from third with Peter Berryman in fourth. Then it's Carl Janssen in fifth and Johan Haaf in sixth position. Championship leader starts from seventh. That's Jeff Giassi with Yao Vaz in eighth position to the Portuguese speakers. Then you've got Alexander Larritsen in ninth position. Needs a good result today. Mark Perez also on the outside. He's there in tenth. Volmeyer. He's on the bubble, 20th position. He starts from 11th. Julian Rodriguez in at 12th. Then you've got Brian Lockwood, Mac Backham, Kim Erickson, Oriol Bow, Christopher Danbeats from 17th, Max Stappen 18th, Adria Perez from 19th, Gnoso to Stalin 20th, and Gianni Vecchio starting from the back. I'm very so sorry, Jay. I stole your thunder there for the last 10 without even knowing. That's fine. I don't mind at all. It's uh, perfectly fine for you to do that because you butchered less names than I would. So, um, now, one thing we have seen throughout this series as well is the amount of time the drivers are taking to get up on the grid. They are waiting till the exact last moment because the, the tyres will drop in temperature while they're waiting on the grid or, or they the drivers are believing that the tyres are dropping in temperature. So they're holding off as late as they can, making sure they don't burn any extra fuel, don't have any change in tyre pressure. They know exactly how the car's going to handle straight out of the gate. But I think uh, once we get into that infield section, turns three, turns four, turns five... And uh, coming onto the Wellington Strait, we're going to have a very, very exciting little battle pack going on at that point. It's going to be very interesting. Of course, this track is quite wide and will be narrowed for 2020's Formula One season. That I do know. Uh, they have done some work to try and cost cut over at Silverstone. But we have a little bit more track, about five metres on each side, which gives us an opportunity to really uh, work exactly what is capable of doing. Most of the drivers now up onto the grid. They want to have the best runs possible. Let's get the lights on. Let's get ourselves ready. Engine notes rise. It's 12 laps of Silverstone. And it's underway right about now. And who's got the good start? It's not Peter Berryman. It is, though, a good start for Kai Janssen. Immediately going side by side. Jesse immediately attacking. Johan Haas on the inside for this long turn number one. Contact in the background, I think there may have been, as they go on through. Is everyone okay through that section? Yes, they are. In towards turn number three they go and unfazed is one driver being Dane Warren at the front through to turn four Cholak trying to fight back in oh Jassy goes straight on the championship leader yeah he got hit from behind there did Jeff Jassy so that's a horrible way for his championship to continue but Mark, uh, Cholak here and Carl Jansen they're going at it down uh, the Wellington straight Oh, they absolutely are as they weed the beams right in the background as well as they all try and find a way through. Larrickson, Volmeyer and Hearth having their scrap here as they head into this lovely, lovely Luffield corner as they go through. Oh, Ericsson's been turned and he takes another one with him and more go around. Who's that who's gone around? I don't think it was Verstappen. It's Dan Beat in the red line car. Jassy will get through all of them. So Julian Rodriguez, Kim Ericsson and co all run themselves into trouble. I think Brian Lockwood may have just got involved in that. He'll get a replay up on screen very, very soon, but this battle is still going on in the midfield. Verstappen with a great run on Lockwood as well, and Lockwood's made a huge mistake. He'll lose the spot. And just in the background, Boa and Perez side by side as well. This is a section you don't want to go side by side because it will cost you so much time. And then you can see it now. Vecchio trying to get back through. Well, Gianni Vecchio, a last to first challenge of some sorts, and says Dalen all of a sudden at the chapel wants to try and find himself maybe a bit of holy matrimony to get a position to go through. Not going to find that one at the moment. Long hanger straight, and drivers looking every which way to make a move. Larrickson under pressure, looking to attack. Why though goes Johan Haas through at that beautiful, beautiful Stowe corner. Not going to quite get there. 
though. Jonas Volmeyer desperately trying to find a way through. Big late lunge down to the inside as he tries to get that one done. Verstappen goes through on Brian Lockwood behind. And all of a sudden, look at this. Three wides. They go through the final corner at the Vale. And suddenly, it's two for one. Brilliant work from Alexander Larison. That's the sort of move that puts your championship in. Mark Perez hard to the inside. Check up. Verstappen trying to look to the inside. Contact. There goes the quieter car. Bye-bye, Matt Backham. Yeah, Backham is out of this race by the looks of it as well. So replay that up on screen because we were trying to catch a replay of the incident at the start of the race. So here is Ritson, who's now up into seventh position, started back in uh, or in the second half of the grid. And uh, you can see there, Johan Haas getting shuffled a little bit wide. And the sixth car there of Volmeyer. This is the three wide you were talking about just before. It's very, and uh, what a battle this, is, this was at that point there. You can see it's the six that comes across and it comes across twice on drivers. Verstappen does well. And then it was the inside Mark Perez into the red line driver and then Verstappen able to run through all of them. So let's get a look at this on board from Max's perspective here in the number 10 team red line car. He goes through. Oh, he's lucky he's not hit back him there. And they can see not going to be good then from the other red line car. They all made their way through. Lap one complete. Warren leads. Castle Bond second. Berryman is there in third position at the moment. Fourth is Janssen. Fifth is Cholak. And sixth is Yao Vaz. Those are the top six at the moment right now. Behind that, Alexander Larison is fighting for his seat at the moment. He knows he's got to keep everybody in this train behind. It includes a Red Bull racing driver in that. It includes some of the very, very best that are there to offer. And all of a sudden for third, it looks close because there was Carl Janssen having a look. Maybe it's Kauzabon runs wide through Stowe in front. And suddenly, Dane Warren has a second to his name. Carl Janssen could not get close enough to beat a Berryman, though. Yeah, Kauzabon doesn't look as uh, happy in his car at this stage of the race, probably waiting for the tyres to get up to temp. But there's a big gap between six and seven. So Loritzen now two seconds back. But this uh, second through to six battle, Looks very, very intense as uh, we start to get some lap times in as well. Great pace from Dane Warren. Seven tenths of a second quicker than anyone else out on track. He is flying, and we saw that last week as well. His one lap pace and race pace is incredible at the moment. He's going to be really, really exciting to watch in the Porsche Esports Super Cup later in the year. And let's not forget, Dane Warren comes through the same school of thought of drivers such as Joshua Rogers and Jared Philsell in that championship. Australian drivers who have very, very good pace. That Porsche Esports Super Cup has been a, a, a very much a showcase for those style of drivers who wouldn't normally find themselves near the top, say, in the World Championship Grand Prix Series era, which was dominated by Gregor Hutus and uh, also Martin Cronkase. Kauzabon, though, looking at this, a five-car oh, train. Volmeyer. And they do have to be careful. And Volmeyer there, I think, may have run himself into a spin. He has. He's the man on the bubble, mind you. He was dropped so far back off that instant, down the inside against Canoso to Stalin. And, oh, it was a case of two into one. You felt Volmeyer was going out there, Jay, and to Stalin was always going in. Yeah, strange incident, that one. And um, on first first look, it looked like uh, Tisdale might have been a lot more at fault. But second look there, it may not have been. It may have been just one of those 50-50 line ball decisions. And uh, we would like to get more replays up. But the racing out on track is very, very aggressive tonight. I think uh, this point of the season is really showing that drivers are feeling stressed about this uh, Porsche Esports Super Cup. They want to lock in their spots. And uh, with so few spots left up for grabs now with drivers that haven't locked in those seats. It's putting a lot more pressure on some of these drivers and mistakes are creeping in. Oh, mistakes very much are, but you have to say as well here, Jay, that sometimes these decisions are very tough to see uh, in the opening scenarios that drivers have. And of course, we only get one take, maybe two. Look at exactly how it happens. Sometimes you wish that you had maybe a, a third umpire, some would say, in order to try and get things going. Look though at the back of the train, Max Verstappen starting to get a little bit antsy behind Mark Perez here. He knows he's 16th. He could book his place in the Porsche Esports Super Cup if he wants to uh, with a good result here at Silverstone. But he knows it's got to be a good result here. And on the brakes he goes. Right-hand corner coming up there of the village section. Not quite there for the moment. And this is the draft trains we've seen so many times. One-third distance score complete at the end of this lap. But we know, though, Jay, that drivers do struggle to make the moves once they get caught in a very, very long train as such. 
There we go. Actually, press the right button, unmute my mic up. Yeah, 100% right. And one thing I've noticed and I uh, was uh, over with our colleagues at GSRC on Friday is making sure you get a great exit out of the new section, out of that second hairpin, and getting the run onto the Wellington straight is more crucial than anything else. Whether you're defending or attacking, you need to get that run out of turn four and onto the Wellington straight. If you don't, you leave yourself vulnerable for a pass, or if you're behind, you're not going to get the pass done. So that is the most crucial corner on the circuit for me. Turn four, making sure you get yourself through there and getting the run properly, not taking a shallow line and getting on the throttle early is the big key to this circuit because it sets up the entire rest of your lap. It absolutely does, and you cannot argue against that, though, as they start to make the run to the hangar straight once again right now. Peter Berryman looking close to Thibaut Kazabon at the moment, and for the time being, it seems like the Frenchman able to keep the Irishman behind for the time being here. Two versus four in terms of I rating. These are two of the biggest drivers in terms of this 7.6k soft that they have at the moment on the brakes then into the Vale and Club Corner and they have no real worries to speak of at the moment. It is all about the setup game, but they are looking maybe behind. Yao Vaz has started to lose touch here with Maran Cholak and the difference that last lap by was a couple of tenths of a second, which brings that gap to nine tenths overall. And all of a sudden, if Yao Vaz loses a second, then maybe someone like Alexander Larritsen can get the hurry up message here and try and go out there, try and attack, try and stay with those drivers in front. Big long line there from Johan Haft. Does he leave himself vulnerable here to Mark Perez? He doesn't, but Verstappen's looking. And you know what? Leave a little bit of room for him, why don't you? He is effectively racing royalty, some would say. He's become sim racing royalty as well. Of course, won a race earlier in the season by the smallest possible margin you could win by. And um, he's actually flying along at the moment and up the inside that's a move done and done fairly easily just no, again no it's not it's got the inside though he's got the inside oh, but that was a case of a up and under but look at this try and go around the outside of the right hander and this is another great battle with Max Verstappen we saw in a week ago how he fought very hard at Virginia International Raceway now at Silverstone surely Mark Perez can't hold it around the outside at Cox Corner. And finally, he does have to yield, but he'll come back up and under again, heading to these fantastic right and left corners that Maggots and Beckett's know. Lift off of it. Here comes Brian Lockwood now, trying to take advantage around the outside. Lockwood will start to look as he tries to get it going through Maggots, through Beckett's, now into Chapel Corner. And suddenly, nope, can't get that one done. There's a hanger straight, though, waiting. And this is what makes this style of racing so conducive to battling here around this track. All of that has allowed a breakaway for Larrett and Johan half of a couple seconds, but still Brian Lockwood thinking about the move. Thought better of it though. Down into the right-hand bend of Stowe Corner. Some fantastic racing here at Silverstone. 100%. We also saw there was an issue there for Jeff Giassi. We saw him off the circuit. There was contact made in the battle between he, Vecchio, and Taz Dalen. We won't get a replay up on screen because we'll stay with this live battle here because this is a very, very important battle. We're actually going to cut away to the front of the field because it's on for third and second at the moment. Calzabon's under a lot of pressure right now. Absolutely, he is. And that is Peter Berryman, who was a effectively pro driver last year when it came to the Porsche Esports Super Cup. Only took three rounds. And because of the fact he didn't drive enough rounds in the season, he won't qualify for next year. But he'll be eligible for the year after. He just wants to prove I can still race with some of the best as he looks to make his charge forward. So no worries about that then. For the time being, his top five drivers all very, very consistent at the moment in their times. But crucially, they're not a million miles away at the moment, Jay, from Dane Warren here. He's only 1.1 seconds, 1.2 down the road. And that's something to keep in mind. 1.2 is not unassailable right now. Warren is matching, if not slightly quicker than these drivers that he's racing against. But... It takes one small mistake and a second goes away. Exactly right. It doesn't take much at all. And he'll, uh, well, one brake lock up could cost him that time. It's uh, slightly growing because uh, Kazabon, I don't think, is watching ahead too much at the moment. He's watching his mirror a little bit too much. He's running a little bit more shallow line than normal and starting to cause him to slow his pace up. Peter Berryman looking very, very strong, though. I wouldn't be surprised to see him get the move done as we. Pretty much halfway through this race already. He's flying by. These races are very, very short. 
doesn't leave much time to get moves done. So getting a move done early is so much more critical. Here comes Berryman. He's going to throw it up the inside. No, backs out of it at the last second. Yeah, decides better against it this time by, but he's got six more opportunities when he crosses the start finish line, and that's going to be just eating into the back of his mind. I don't have to make this move, but it would be very, very nice if I were capable enough to go out there and make that happen out on track. It's a case of uh, battle backs of two all across the circuit. Kim Erickson, Julian Rodriguez, for example, to Zdalen and Vecchio, for example, Bo and Lockwood is one of them. For example, as they all have their little scraps up and down the circuit. In terms of retirements today, just the one to talk to you about at the moment. That is Mac Backham, the number one driver oh, we can make in it two this now. field at the moment. And Oh, yes, we can make it too. Yep, Volmeyer is out of the race. So I'm not sure if he's pulled over to the side, but it's just saw his uh, name drop off the timing sheet. I think yep, he's actually had a pull an over. issue. Yep, yeah, he has. So he's decided he's not going to go any further. So the setup's not working for him or a deeper issue so unfortunate for him but uh one last chance next week to uh to get some points mark perez not quite able to stay on the back of max Verstappen. he's starting to pull away a tiny little bit and let's remember as well jonas volmeyer has not had a good week here this week at silverstone you'll only take a maximum of 63 points coming out of this one and use it as a drop round so for the final round he is going to be really much at squeaky bum time trying to get himself in the top 20. Remember, he comes into this race today here, Jay, as the 20th position driver. That would be the last seat that would be available. So if he's taking a drop round now for only 63 points, he's going to need a mega run when we head to that final round of the championship, a very important final round of the championship, which, of course, is going to be in one week's time. And that track, of course, you don't need any introductions for just how good that is. It's Road America, of course. Yep, it's uh, going to be an awesome race at Road America. A great race to finish off championships as well. So looking forward to seeing how that race plays out. Perez got a very, very good exit out of Maggots and Beckett's and onto the hangar straight, but not quite close enough to get that move back done up the inside of Max Verstappen. So Verstappen oh. is uh, moving Vecchio. up the field. Vecchio. Look at this, side by side with Ginoso to Zdalen, trying to get around the outside. You're not going to get that done there. No room there to deal with that. Maybe a lunge down at the left-hander and gets close, really close there. I think they almost had a bit of trading paints there as they went on through, but ultimately no dice through that section. To Zdalen able to close that gap down to get alongside, and he got that gap down from about a car length back. That's a really good indicator here, Jay. Uh, an indicator, sorry, of just how good you need to be and how close you need to be through the Maggots Beckett section, which is notorious for how difficult it is with dirty air effect that comes along in these vehicles. Not as much as open wheelers, but still enough. 100% does cause a, a big issue. Just also saw that uh, Dan Beats in the pits. So he's done as well. He drifted and that out. car into the pits and he's done from the race as well. So now three retirements, only four, four and a half laps left. So uh, if you're back in the field and know that this isn't going to be a big point scoring round, some of these drivers are thinking, well, I'm done. There's no point going on any further. But um, the likes of Jassy, who we saw involved early on as uh, Vecchio and Tess Dalen actually side by side again. Ericsson in there too. Bit of a bum. Oh, Kim Ericsson up oh. the inside. How did you get that done? Wow. Kim Ericsson, remember, is right on the outside looking in. He's there with Gianni Vecchio as drivers who need to get results right now. And they know they're fighting second split drivers who are going to be getting more points on the brakes. They go, oh, no! Round goes Gianni Vecchio through the contact into Stalin. And just like that, they go hard into the tyres. There goes Gianni. And that was a case of, well, they were fighting incredibly hard with each other. You could see there was one bit of contact that came through uh, that section there. And the case of, well, got to go careful through this section. One touch. And I believe there was another one there from Ericsson. He managed to make contact twice. Vecho had four bits of contact. And it was the fourth one that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, so see he's gone all the way back to uh, the two-for-one offer that Kim Ericsson picked up there. Here comes Andrea. Oh, no. Into the teammates they go along. He got too much curb through that section. And Oriel Bow survives and keeps the position. But these two, that was not good heads up driving here, Jay. You've got to look at it. They have lost contact now with Brian Lockwood with four to go. Yep, replay that up on screen now. And uh, T 
teammates making contact, never a good sign. And yet, side by side contact, and now they've lost that draft as well from uh, Brian Lockwood, as you said. So, four retirements in this race now. Uh, surprised how many we've seen so far. Not long to go. Peter Berryman still can't get this move done. I thought his pace would have been able to, uh, would have meant that he would have been able to get it done. And interesting too, Carl Jansen, who has set the fastest lap of the race, is starting to drop from the back of Berryman, and Cholak now starting to look uh, like he might be able to get a move done. Yeah, certainly, and Mar Marin Cholak wants to prove that he can get by into fourth position and pretty much sign, seal, and deliver a seat for next year, or this year even, I should say, as they go on forward. It is worth noting as well, when it comes to these retirements, Jay, that there is one Kawanda car that has retired out of one Kawanda car starting, but if there are, Three Team Redline cars who have retired from this race. This has not been the day that Dom Duhan would have wanted to see for his team. But three out of four starters in Team Redline that are out of the race. So just uh, Max Verstappen left at this stage. So from what I can see in the list, I might have missed someone else, have I? I think that's it. No, I think you're absolutely right yeah. with that. And what's better is that uh, Max Verstappen is matching the leader's pace. Yeah, last lap by was... Uh, only two hundredths of a second slower than Peter Berryman and three hundredths of a second slower than Dame Warren. So Verstappen definitely oh, is quick. Oh, here comes Cholak. Yep, here he comes. Going to have to go the Look long way, this. though. He will. Oh, no, he won't. He'll dive down to the inside the same way Vettel tried to do on Verstappen one year ago here at this magical circuit. Not quite happening, though. Up and under attempt coming along through the final corner of club. And again, just... Not conducive enough to dive down the inside and make it happen. They've lost Peter Berryman now and Thibaut Kauzabon to the tune of 1.6 seconds. That's what battling does here. But you have to say something very important now. Berryman can now try and attack here. Thibaut for second position. Thibaut knows he needs these points. He knows he needs to make sure he's safe. But likes of Yao Vaz now brought back into the mix. If they fight even harder, you've got also Larritsen and Hearth and Verstappen and Perez now who are closing together. Brian Lockwood trying to stay on this as well. There are positions to fight for here in the final two and a bit laps and Berryman all of a sudden close to Thibaut Kalsabon. Just not enough though later on the brakes, but it's going to go far too wide through the left-hand corner of Brooklyn. Yeah, that's a corner that you do lose a lot of ground there if you run wide because you don't have the momentum up to be able to get an advantage through the next section. So he's lost a little bit of ground, but it doesn't mean that he's out of this. But Carl Jansen is feeling the pressure from behind. Have a look at how close. This is the closest draw like speed now. Absolutely it is. And now you start seeing this through Cop's corner. He needs to just set up this move all the way to the hangar straight using all of your road tax there on the outside is Carl Jansen in the number 10 core sim racing machine. We talk about how Carl Jansen very, very good as he goes through. He is one of the best drivers when it comes to sim racing. He's got a 24 hours a day toner under his belt on iRacing. That's how good he is. Peter Berryman looking very close. He's within two car lengths now as he looks to try and close down that gap using the toe to his advantage. But I think he'll be happy just to sit, just to wait. There'll be better chances in the future as he looks at the back of that Triple A esports vehicle. And AAA as a team, not many people have talked about AAA. I love what AAA are doing. They are probably one of the few teams that can actually say they've got as much reach and as much ability and skill, Jay, as Team Redline has over the sim racing sphere. 100%. And they've done a really, really good job throughout this series as well. They've been right there. Just think back to Daytona. They had uh, two cars in the, the top of the field, almost took the win away from Verstappen. So they've had a really good season. They've just sort of almost been the forgotten team throughout this championship, throughout this season so far. Johan Hart actually looking to make a move here right up underneath the rear wing of Luritz and was almost able to get it done. But 100% um, right, AAA Esports, ones to watch, I think, in the Porsche Esports Super Cup as well. I absolutely agree with you. And now we start looking at these final two laps for Stappen on the back of Hart and Larrickson as well. So this becomes a three-car scrap going on for these lower positions this is seventh eighth and ninth on the road and the last lap passes sometimes come at a premium in these series but every position counts and every little helps as some would say as one supermarket chain would say as they now look to try and go through brooklyn or luffield corner even uh coming up and then the woodcut kink which can be cut on this layout the old layout of silverstone on the irising service the free to run layout you can't cut that section you can here on this one as they go through trolak again close to 
uh, Ericsson and actually, uh, sorry, Janssen even, and a lot closer than I thought he would be at this point in time. Yeah, Carl Janssen's uh, pace has dropped off a lot. After he set that fastest lap of the race, he hasn't been able to get anywhere near it. As likes of Dane Warren, his lap pace has been incredibly consistent. I think his fastest lap and his slowest lap are only separated by around about three or four tenths of a second. But uh, Janssen's a lot bigger gap, so his uh, race pace is a little bit more inconsistent, possibly just based on the pressure that Cholak's putting in the background. But Cholak not quite close enough to get a move done. I thought he was going to be able to do it, but not quite yet. But I, I must say Verstappen, how quick has he closed in on the back of uh, Lauritsen and Half as well? I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a positional change oh. in the last lap as Half uh, has got Lauritsen defending now. This is going to be an intense little three-car fight. It will very, very soon be a four-car fight. Well, it's the last lap of the race, so not long to make it a four-car fight. Johan Haas wants to try and get through. Larrickson defending with everything he's got. Remember, he's on the outside. He's looking in. He needs points more than these drivers do at this point in time. Great run through turn three. Looking to dive down the inside. Verstappen looks to the outside to try and get it done here on the Frenchman, Johan Haas. The Dane in front, though, of Alexander Larrickson. Doesn't have to really worry as they go through the left kink then of Aintree Corner. And now they go on to turn five and look to attack Warren. Leading this one, no worries at the moment for Thibaut Kazabon in second. Berryman is not close enough. Not close enough either into the left. Is one miss. Darren Cholak, he can't find a way through. Just yet. No, Larrickson. Alexander Larrickson. And I think he had some help there. On the brakes, tried to defend it. Door couldn't get shut in time. And Larrington loses six positions for his woes. And that really does hurt him in his championship. And he's only got to look at himself and say, I didn't shut the door quick enough. Verstappen will want in on that scrap, though, for the time being, as well as Janssen uh, versus Cholak at the moment. That one. Very, very close. No worries at the moment for Dane Warren at the front of the field. But that's where it is at the moment. Maran Cholak, the former ETCC driver, looking to dive at some stage. And he's got a very good run here coming out of the chapel corner. But he gets something of nothing as he gets onto the hangar straight. He struggled with understeer on the exit. Does Berryman have a look now here as he tries to get past Thibaut Kazabon? Kazabon does defend the line, though through the corner. He's definitely not comfortable here with this second position. Berryman's got a chance if he wants to die for it, but it is hard defended by Kazabon. Berryman's got to go around the outside for the podium here. He's got the nose for the inside. You got to leave him room and a bit of contact to go. Dane Warren's got no qualms. He'll take back-to-back -back wins here at Silverstone, but Berryman takes second in the final section. And you look behind at the battles. They're all going to come together uh, with no more worries to speak of at all as they go through. But brilliant, brilliant racing throughout. Dane Warren back to back securing his place. What a victory once again for Dane Warren. And that, as you said, secures his place in the, the Esports Super Cup as well because he has uh, absolutely dominated for his, as he's worked his way out from split, two, uh, split three to split two to split one. He's been incredibly dominant in each race he's run, regardless of the level of skill that he's been racing again against. He has been phenomenally quick. Congratulations, Dave Warren. A great win. Great pass at the end there from Peter Berryman. I think we need another look at that. We absolutely do. He set that up a charm on Thibaut Kalsbon. And this is the Motum simulation replay. And you have to say, Thibaut Kalsbon was slightly too defensive heading into that right hand. Berryman was going to find a way through. Uh, at the right of Stowe Corner. That set himself up to be slow on this run in. And Berryman taking the outside line then and just really sticking the nose in, knowing that the next two corners favoured him. Little bit of contact there. That's the style of racing that we've got in the Esports Super Cup. But that was a very nice move done by Peter Berryman to get it done. And of course, with that short run to the start-finish line as well, Jay, once you get that move done, there's no opportunity to get that back. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, a really, really well set up move. And all we have to do is just get a tiny little bit of overlap. It just forces the the other car to, to run that slightly wider line, opens the door, and that's moved on. So congratulations to Berryman. But again, Dane Warren, too good for everyone else again.
Absolutely official classified results on your screen here from Silverstone. It's Dane Warren who picks up the win in 24 minutes and 49 seconds. He takes the win by two overall from Peter Berryman who got the move done in the third to last corner into the second to last corner at this track there. Second from starting in fourth position. Thibaut Casbon will take a podium, but he will look at his driving skills and say, well, do I have the... Uh, the track awareness to try and correct that move one more time if I battle Peter Berryman. Kai Janssen, a quiet fourth place despite setting the fastest lap of the race with Marin Cholak behind in fifth. A quiet race as well for Yao Vaz. He very much has stayed on the back of that train. Will be happy with sixth position, especially knowing that coming into this race, he was very, very much outside of the top 20 in 23rd position. It's a seventh place for Johan Haas, but... There is a big asterisk around that one after the contact that he had. Max Verstappen, a very well-respected up 10 today. Biggest mover and shaker in the field again as he finishes in eighth overall. Mark Perez gets ninth, and it was Brian Lockwood who rounds out the top 10. Over the page to Perez in P11. Boa in P number 12. Those guys had a bit of a battle, but... Uh, Loritzen, he'll be absolutely devastated with that result there, finishing... In position 13 deserved a lot better as well based on his pace and his defensive drive just that last lap wasn't able to shut the door early enough kim erickson recovery drive to 14th position with moreno and giassi also recovery drives 15th and 16th taz dalen the last of our finishes position number 17 and then it's a an absolutely all-star list of drivers that did not finish this race dan beats vecchio volmeyer and mac backham all did not complete this 12 lap journey and that really does tell you it is important to get finishes. It makes your life doubly difficult with the two splits that are available, the two races that are available per week, which get a high enough strength of field. This final race week, though, it's going to be so, so important. It's Road America. It's Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. And we talk about this track with a lot of further. A lot of people think, oh, it's just another one of these American race tracks. It doesn't really do much. But when you look at Road America, how conducive it is to battling to side by side, and it does so without the need of really a slow speed chicane, that is truly a marvel of a circuit to finish the season at. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to getting to Road America and uh, it should provide some really, really interesting racing. Only 11 laps, which means that the drivers will have to get moves done really early, but getting uh, heat into the tyres early on as well because you'll leave yourself so susceptible into Turn 5, that long straight into Turn 5. We're going to see a lot of l uh, late lunges, a lot of interesting passes there. I'm looking forward to getting out there on the circuit uh, next week. It's going to be a very, very interesting and entertaining race. I'm, I'm feeling that we're going to have a grandstand finish to this championship. And, well, the only place you can catch that is here on the iRacing Esports Network. Make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe for more great content brought to you by all of the partners here at this iRacing Esports Network. Of course, you've got us at SimSpeed. You've got the Global Sim Racing Channel, as we mentioned earlier on. RaceBot TV, Apex Racing TV, Podium Esports, LSR TV. They've recently been acquired by 52 Media in their transaction. We wish them all the best of luck with their acquisition. But... Of course, for those who get it done for us here at SimSpeed, a big thank you goes to Motum Simulations who help with the replays that we have available to us. And from Jay Kennedy on the cameras and on my right-hand side, I, of course, have been Jake Sperry. Dane Warren goes back-to-back. -back. He picks up his place in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. But Elkhart Lake awaits for those who did not have the best race, for those who couldn't do enough. There are chances of redemption out there, especially for Alexander Lauritsen. But Altus, they will be happy, though. They've got their star man in, and so many more have already booked their place. What's the conclusion of the championship one week from now at the magical Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin? Fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rhythm. He's got both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh, he's taken Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get involved. Six straight 
close. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. God, what?